I'm Yolanda Vasquez, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I am joined now in the studio by Delegate Ann Kaiser from District 14. And it's a pleasure to have you here in our studio. Thank you, Yolanda. Glad to be here. So you were reelected in your district, and I saw on your website that you're thanking the community for giving you an opportunity to another four more years. Yes. Are you excited about this opportunity to come back? I, I really am. I'm excited. My whole team is returning as well. and. Uh, we have a lot of things to work on. I was going to say, this is going to be your uh, fourth term um, in the Maryland General Assembly. Tell me what you're thinking when it comes to the 2015 uh, General Assembly, this upcoming legislative session. What are your thoughts? Well, I think there's a, a whole range of thoughts. You know, from our delegation perspective, our top issues are school construction funding, which is so important, something we hear about every day. This county adds 2,500 new students a year and, and we need to keep pace and get kids out of the trailers. At the same time, we're, we're looking at funding priorities like the Purple Line. And so this is something we've always been looking at. And clearly the, uh, the landscape has changed. We'll have a, a Republican governor and a Democratic legislature. And he has expressed interest in maybe not uh, funding the Purple Line. And so certainly we have to look at what are those shared opportunities in working with this governor and looking for bipartisan solutions. I mean, I think the message that the American people gave la two weeks ago in so many ways was work together. And so I think there are a lot of shared opportunities to look at job creation, economic development, and a lot of those uh, pocketbook issues that uh, really matter to families. Let's go back to the school construction for a second. Is it that the funding is not there to build the new schools and do you want the state to be more of an integral process in this? Yes, the, the county does invest in school construction. The state needs to do more. The state's level of investment at several hundred million a year hasn't, uh, as it gets divided up uh, throughout the state. When Montgomery County gets about 40 million a year, that's not enough to keep pace with not just building new buildings, but also fixing old buildings yeah. that we have. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, Maryland faces a shortfall of nearly $600 million, as everybody's well aware of, in the next operating budget. How do you think that uh, the governor-elect and the rest of the General Assembly will reconcile that? It seems like there's a, it's a huge gap to fill, right? It certainly is, and there have been gaps to fill like that in prior years that have been able to be filled. Uh, to maintain our priorities in education, public safety, health care, and other key areas, it's really hard. There's going to have to be some cuts made all, all across the board, uh, not evenly. I mean, there's different needs in different areas. And so I definitely think it will be a challenge for the assembly, and certainly the new governor doesn't have much time to put his budget together before it has to be, be sent to us in the legislature. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have to maintain that the priorities that we look at here in Montgomery County related to things like school construction and transportation, not just the Purple Line, but the I-270 corridor. It's not just about moving our people, it's moving people in other counties, but it's putting people back to work and doing some of those construction jobs. And for us to make, you know, that point very strongly that uh, we're doing our part and we need the state's help in these areas. Um, and from what I understand, you also have a number of new delegates that are coming in. I mean, it's probably one of the largest numbers you've had in quite some time. How do you think that's all going to work? Uh, always the first year of a new term can be very interesting. This year we do have 57 new delegates, the largest number that I remember. Yeah. Uh, we have just five from Montgomery County, though, and that, bo that bodes well for our county and more people who are more senior and more senior leadership positions uh, moving forward. But always the first year, a term, uh, first year of a term is a lot of educating the new members and bringing everyone up to speed. So I think it's great because you have the long timers who know how things work and you have the new people coming in saying, what about this, what about that, let's try something new. And I think it, it uh, creates a great dynamic. Fifteen seconds left as you get ready for January. Are you cautiously optimistic? Glass half full, glass half empty. How are you approaching it? Uh, I'm usually a pessimist, but in this case, I am cautiously optimistic. Well, that's good to hear. Delegate Ann Kaiser, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you again. And that'll do it for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Yolanda Vasquez. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again soon.